Good morning. My name is Mark Willis, and I'm the pastor for Merriam Christian Church. We've been bringing you a series of videos these last weeks as we're unable to gather together physically for worship. As we begin to move toward the conversation of when we might be able to gather physically for worship again, we've decided to start doing our worship services here from the sanctuary to start reconnecting with this sacred space again as we worship together through the internet and through these videos on Sunday mornings and other times during the week. We'd like to begin a time of worship now. As we prepare to worship together, I would ask that you, where you are, prepare your space at home for worship. Get your Bible off the shelf and have it there with you. Get something to take for communion, maybe a piece of bread and some water or crackers and juice. Maybe light a candle, something that marks this time as special, as, as sacred, as holy. Turn off other distractions. Go ahead and mute your phone. Turn off the TV. Well, not if you're watching this video on it, but if you have other devices doing something, go ahead and turn those off for now. And let's give this time together over to God totally and completely in worship and praise. We'd like to begin our time of worship today with our morning prelude. As we enter into this time of worship together, we're going to light our Christ candle. And the other candles we have here. If you have a candle there in your worship space this morning, go ahead and light that. Let us celebrate the coming of Christ into our lives this morning. We do, of course, want to recognize that today is Mother's Day. 
And with that, we want to take a moment to recognize and celebrate the mothers that have been in our lives. And I have a short blessing here for all of our mothers. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you give life and care for your church. Bless these women as we celebrate this day in their honor. May they be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them with a spirit of profound respect. May the example of Mary, mother of Jesus, inspire them to live their vocation as mothers and call their children to faith. Guide and protect them in challenging times and help them to continue to trust in you all the days of their life. Would you join me in a word of prayer for mothers? For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, and others who show us a mother's love, we pray to the Lord. For adoptive mothers and for the women who wish to give birth but experience challenges that they know your care, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For those who wish to serve as mothers but are not able to do so, that they may know your comfort, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have passed on, that God may bring them into the joy of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord this hallowed, blessed day. Amen. Let us now enter into a time of worship. as we listen to our call to worship today. Friends in Christ, we are gathered to give thanks for all we have received from God's good hands, to praise God's holy name, to acknowledge and confess our sins, to hear God's holy word, and to ask those things needed for life. Let us draw near to God in humility and celebrate God's infinite goodness and mercy. We are going to begin today with our song of praise, which is Take My Life and Let It Be. In the description underneath this video, I will have links to where you can click and get the words for these songs. We're going to be singing two verses of each song till our last song, and our last song will do three. If you'd like to look those words up, do that now. We're going to begin with our first song, Take My Life. Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my moments and my days Let them flow in ceaseless praise Let them flow in ceaseless praise Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store take myself and i will be ever only all for thee ever only all for thee we'd like to take a moment now and speak directly to our children <clears throat> hopefully your kids are with you now in this worship time. I'm going to come a little closer to the camera so that they can see what I'm trying to show them. I want to talk to our kids today about sheep. I don't know if any of you have ever perhaps been on a sheep farm or maybe to a petting zoo and had the chance to see sheep. When you brand sheep, in other words, when you put a mark on them so that other people know whose sheep that is, for most animals, like cows and horses, when we brand them, we actually use a hot iron. 
and it actually burns the brand into them. But for sheep, commonly we don't do that. Instead, for sheep, we use paint. And so I've got some pictures here that I want to share with you. Let me get that close so you can see it. This is a picture of some sheep that have been branded. And you might notice, let me get it up here where you can see it. This particular farm puts a red heart on their sheep. Do you see that there, a little red heart on his side? That's kind of interesting. I also found this picture. Now this is fun. Look at, look at what's on the back of that sheep. That's a big, crazy smiley face. That's what that farm decided to put on so people would know that that was their sheep. That's why we put brands on sheep is so people know that sheep belongs to me. Well, you know, in the Gospel of John in the 10th chapter, Jesus talks about being our shepherd. And he talks about us as being his sheep. And Jesus tells us because he is the good shepherd, because he takes care of us and watches over his flock and loves his flock, that his sheep, you and I, that we would know his name, that we would know him by the sound of his voice, and that we would follow him where he goes. And Jesus marks us, just like the farmers marked these sheep, with a smiley face or with a red heart, Jesus marks each of us with his love. And when we go out into the world, that's how people know who our shepherd is. That's how people know who we belong to, by the love of Jesus that we show and share with other people. That is our brand. Why don't we say a prayer? We're going to bow our heads and fold our hands. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd and we are your sheep. Mark us with your love that the world will know who we belong to and that we can show that love to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Don't forget, kids, to check out our children's worship and wonder video that's up today as well. Christina is going to bring you another great lesson about the Good Shepherd. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading today is going to come from the book of Acts, the seventh chapter, verses 55 through 60. This is the accounting of the stoning of Stephen, who was a disciple of Jesus. Starting in verse 55, Acts 7, 55 through 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears. And with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Our song of prayer this morning is Here I Am, Lord. Again, there's a link right below this video if you'd like to pull those words up and sing along. We'll be doing two verses and two times through the chorus, Here I Am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you 
lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will Excuse me, I have a little frog in my throat there. Let us come together now as the body of Christ, spread as we are throughout our community, throughout our country, throughout our world. Let us come together now, though, as one body, still connected by the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Let us come together in a time of prayer. Would you join me in this moment? Almighty and gracious God, it seems like lots of uncertainty around us. So many people who need prayers. Today, I pray for those whose health is compromised by the coronavirus or other health issues. May your healing and peace be upon them, that they know they are not alone. Surround them with your love and the great cloud of witnesses in prayer. For those who suffer from the economic impact of the virus in travel, manufacturing, hospitality, energy, and so many other industries, guide them and direct them to new opportunities and endeavors. Bless them with hope and peace. For healthcare workers and first responders and other public servants who put themselves in harm's way for us, protect them, watch over them. For our leaders of the world, our country, states, and cities, as they seek to help manage this challenge, bless them with wisdom, with grace, with knowledge and insight, so they may make decisions for the greater good, remembering to care for the least of these. God, it can be overwhelming. But you tell us over and over again, do not fear. Show us how to trust in you. As I examine my heart during this difficult season, help me to turn away from my concern with self and turn my heart, my hands, and my prayers toward the concern of others. Make me a beacon of your grace and love to a world in darkness. May others come to experience you In my words and steps, the doors to this building may be closed, but may your church rise in your people and be in our world daily. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. (laughs) 
glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I almost said thank you. you may be seated. If you're standing up at home, you get extra props. That's, that's definitely extra credit if you stood up for that. Uh, and if you did, now of course you may be seated. Our sermon scripture reading today comes from the book of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 14. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to where I am. I'm sorry, will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the, in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me, because of the works themselves, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me of anything, I will do it. <clears throat> Pardon me for just a moment. I seem to have my notes out of order here. Okay. It has been eight weeks. Eight weeks since things were normal. Eight weeks since we were able to go anywhere, like a concert, or a sporting event, or church. Eight weeks where we have had to change everything. It has not been easy, not at all. This, this new normal that we are confronted with leaves us scared and worried, leaves us frustrated and angry. We don't understand why things can't just be how they always were. Why can't things go back to the way they were? Why do I have to do it this new way now? In many ways, I think the disciples after the resurrection must have faced very similar feelings. Everything that they had known, everything that they had come to believe in, everything that they had gotten used to had changed. It had changed the moment that the stone was rolled away, the moment that the tomb was empty, the moment that Jesus appeared to them and said, peace be with you. Everything was different now. The normal they had known was gone. And there was a new normal in front of them. And 
as they tried to pick up and, and move forward in this new normal, I am sure that they felt lost. That they felt like they were wandering blindly at times. That they were unsure and unconfident about what this new normal would be. But they knew in their hearts that this new normal was necessary. It was the path Jesus had laid out for them. And they needed to follow it. Jesus had told them there would be a new way, a new direction that they were unfamiliar with. In John 14, Jesus says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Stop worrying. Do not fear. Trust in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. I've got this, Jesus says. I'm getting this new normal ready. I am preparing a place for you and I will take you there. I'll be your guide, your guiding light on this new path. And here's the kicker. You know the way to the place where I am going. Jesus announces this new normal to them and stands back to see the awe and appreciation and thanksgiving rise up in his disciples. He has just laid out God's plan. This is how we are going to do things from now on. I, Jesus, am preparing a place for you. I, Jesus, will come and take you to this place. And best of all, you already know the way. If you've been paying attention to all those parables and miracles and lessons and conversations we've been having for on three years now, as we've wandered around Galilee, what do you say to that? And Thomas, poor Thomas, God bless Thomas. Thomas answers for the group. Known throughout the centuries as Thomas the Doubter, Doubting Thomas, because he wouldn't believe his brothers and sisters when they said Jesus had risen from the tomb. He needed to see Jesus for himself. And so we hung the moniker of Doubter around his neck in a pejorative way, as if doubt is bad. But doubt helps us to clarify and understand. Doubt causes us to dig deeper and seek wisdom. Doubt is a fire within that makes us ask questions and seek answers. So poor Thomas jumps in with both feet here, not in praise and adoration, not in appreciation and thanksgiving. Jesus says, you know the way to the place where I'm going, right? You remember, we talked about it about a billion times. And Thomas steps up and asks the question that they are all thinking right now. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? We don't get it. This, this new path, this, this new way, this new normal you're talking about, it has sailed over our heads. We want the old normal. We were used to that. We want the old ways. We want what is familiar, what is routine, what is already in place. We, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus said to him, calm down. Peace be with you. Do not fear. I am the way. Follow me. I will take you. I will show you. I will guide you to this new normal. I don't know if the disciples ever really got that message, though, until after the resurrection. 
after the resurrection, when the old ways were destroyed, when the old normal was left in shambles by an empty tomb and a risen Savior, then the disciples began to understand everything has changed, but it is okay. Because Jesus is still with us. The grave could not contain him. And Jesus will take us to the new normal if we trust and follow him. So the disciples went out and began to teach and preach and heal and cast out demons. They were spreading the word. There's a new way. And what they found was a world that was not ready to give up on the old way. They were met with animosity, with anger, with frustration, with ridicule. They were run out of towns. They were arrested. They were jailed. On the day of Pentecost, with God's Spirit upon them and the sudden ability to spread the word in foreign languages that none of them had ever spoken before, they were accused of being drunkards. But still they pressed on. They had seen the new way. They had touched it. They had felt it. They'd been touched by Jesus and called to this new way, and they pressed on. Our first scripture reading today was an accounting of one of those encounters. Stephen, a disciple of Jesus, is telling people about the new way, and it is not going well at all. He implores the people to think on their history of Abraham, of Joseph, of David, to remember how God has led the Israelites on new paths before, how the people have always resisted, have always fought against the new normal. How many times in the desert did they moan at Moses, we should just go back to slavery in Egypt? Stephen becomes frustrated that the people will not listen. He chastises them for not embracing this new normal, for not hearing what he is saying, for not seeing Jesus as the way. He reminds them that every prophet that has come speaking truth about God, they have resisted. They have persecuted. He calls them stiff-necked, meaning they won't turn their heads and look at it another way. They won't turn their heads and see another path. So they drag him into the street and stone him to death. They pelt him with rocks and stones until he dies at the feet of a young man named Saul. As I was reading this scripture this week, one phrase jumped out at me. Stephen tells the crowd he can see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, meaning Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior. This is the new way. And John's Gospel says, But they covered their ears. And with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. They covered their ears. Sometimes we don't want to hear it. Sometimes we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear about change. We don't want to hear about a new way. We don't want to hear about a new normal. We don't want to give up our old way, our comfortable Normal. So we cover our ears like a small child screaming, na, 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 I can't hear you. The logic being, if I can't hear it, then it doesn't exist. But we are just fooling ourselves in that scenario. The new way, the new normal has come. Whether we stick our head in the sand or not, whether we give our okay or not, the new normal is here. And only by trusting in Jesus and following Jesus will we make our way through it. This week, many states and cities have begun loosening restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. As they have, they've also kept in place some provisions for public safety. Many places are requiring us to wear a mask. 
I have one here. Let me find it. This is a mask that Emily made for me. And I wear this when I go to the grocery store. It's very fancy. It's got polka dots on it. Very festive. That's what I wear now. I'm not used to wearing a mask. It gets a little humid in there sometimes. Got to get back in my car and clean my hands and blow my nose sometimes because my nose is running. But this is part of the new normal we're experiencing. Many places are requiring me to wear a mask. These are important right now. This disease spreads easily and quickly, and masks help cut down on some of that. Not all of it, but some of it. I saw this explanation a couple weeks ago. It's one that my wife is particularly tickled by. It goes like this. If you and I are both standing there naked and you decide to pee, undoubtedly, I'm going to get some on me. Now, if we're both standing there and I have on pants and you're naked and you pee, well, I still might get a little bit on me. But if we're both standing there and you have on pants and I have on pants and you decide to pee, it's pretty much just staying with you. It's the same logic for masks. I wear my mask not just because it protects me, but I wear it because it helps protect you. If I should have this disease, me wearing a mask helps protect others just a little bit. But some people don't want to be told what to do. Some people don't want this new normal. They want the old normal and they're angry about it. They have their hands clamped over their ears and they're, they're refusing to listen. In Michigan, a security guard informed a shopper in a store that he needed to put on a mask and instead the customer walked over and wiped his nose on the security guard's outfit. In another store, a person was asked to wear a mask, and they got mad about it. They didn't want to wear a mask. No, I'm not going to wear a mask. And they stormed out of the store, and they went home, and they, they got their husband and, and a couple other people, and they came back to the store, and they shot and killed that security guard over a mask. I see it here as well. I went to a doctor's office last week for a consultation. My wife and I are looking for a, a new doctor, and we went to talk to one. And I was shocked that nobody that worked in the doctor's office wore a mask. Not even the doctor, when he sat down just three feet from us to discuss the, the care that he provides and the treatment he provides, my wife and I were the only two wearing masks in a doctor's office. I shouldn't be surprised, I suppose. We are just as bullheaded and obstinate with our faith. We read the scriptures and Jesus says to love one another and we say, well, yeah, but not that person, right? Jesus says you should care for one another and we say, well, I'm kind of busy right now, Lord. Jesus says, forgive one another. And we cover our ears and yell, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it because how can I forgive that person that did that thing to me? Jesus has brought us a new normal, a new way, and has promised he will come to us and take us there if we let him, if we follow a way of hope and grace and love and peace, but we have to trust in Him and follow Him and we have to let go of the old way, the old normal we've become accustomed to. We can grieve it and we can let it go and then we can follow Jesus. We know the way. I know these days are scary. I know everything is different. I know it makes us worried and uncomfortable and uneasy. I know. There's a new normal breaking out right now, and we are having to adjust to it every day. As you go through this new normal, remember whose you are. Remember who walks with you. And remember the way. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. For I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen. This is a time when we consider what we give back to God, our offering, our tithe, our sacrifice. What do we lay at God's altar in offering today? Many of you have mailed your offerings in. You've, you've sent them electronically. You've texted them in. And we appreciate that. Your generosity and your grace is overwhelming in these difficult times. If you would like to give to God, if you would like to give to this church in any way, underneath this video, there is a description and a link of how you can give electronically. You click on that link, it's through Easy Tithe, and it will take you there. There's also a phone number if you'd rather just text an offering. You can do that. There is a short form to fill out at first. But let us go to God in a moment of prayerful reflection and consider what we are giving to God this day. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, even in times of struggle, even in times of desperation, even in times of difficulty, your blessings continue to abound all around us. We are touched and loved and changed in so many ways by your grace and your love. Your blessings touch us every day. This is the time when we can turn back to you with thankful hearts and give back to you in some way. Return but a portion of all that you have blessed us with as a way to say, thank you, God. I love you. Accept these offerings, Lord, in whatever form they may be, in whatever way they may be given. May they bless you and your name and further your kingdom and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings fall. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now is a time when we gather for communion. Hopefully there where you are, you have gathered something to take for communion, some bit of food, some bit of drink, that you can stop for a moment and join us at God's table, this table that extends far beyond this sanctuary, this table that extends into homes all around our community, all around our country, all around our world today. We gather at the same table. This is God's table and we gather here for nourishment for our souls, that we may take God's bread and God's drink, that it may bless us and strengthen us and carry us forward as we follow Christ. Let us gather in communion today. Our song of communion is Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. But do not then depart, Savior, abide with us and spread your table.
table in our heart. There sup with us in love divine, thy body and thy blood, that living bread, that heavenly wine, be our Jesus gathered with his disciples at the table. He took the loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and passed it to them and said, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took a cup and blessed it and passed it among them, saying, This cup is my blood of the new covenant that is shed for you and for many. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious God, we come to your table today that we might touch your grace and love, your hope and peace once again. Through these elements, remind us of Christ's presence with us, Remind us of Christ guiding us on the way and give us the strength to follow. May we take the grace and love that we find at this table into your world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Whatever you might have there, go ahead and take a piece now. Partake together at God's table. For our final song today, we are going to sing, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine, do now befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear thy children when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. This does conclude our worship service today. We go forth now back into a world where we face a new normal. A world that requires us to think of others before self. A world that requires us to follow and trust in Christ. That he will lead us on the way, even through difficult times. Let us go forth now as church, 
already spread out through our community and all of our homes, let us go into the world and spread God's grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen.